OK, so in this third video for Geo 4600, we're going to learn how to basically just make our mapping digital, uh, i.e. digitize our line work from the field. So uh, to do that, we need to use um, polylines. OK, so um, you can go to view again and go back to catalog pane. And then go into your uh, 46, your geo database uh, here. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Refresh here. Oh yeah, here's yeah my file. Let me just check here. Did I get the right? Okay, where's this file? It's geodatabase. For save. Let's refresh. Sometimes things. Don't like to refresh. <laughs> okay, so my uh, geo database is not showing up here. Make sure. But I saved this here. So basically, I want to create a new um, a new line file that we're going to do our mapping from to edit. But I want to make sure that I know where I'm putting that. And ideally, I want to put it inside of my geodatabase. I do see this geodatabase here, but this is not in the correct location. This is not where I saved this project it's like they go save as the aprx file is sitting under onedrive my files so there should be a geo database within that but it's not showing up um in here let me try to refresh it one more time and another solution could be to go in here and I guess I could add a new geodatabase. And I'll just call it um, geologic mapping. OK. Now um, I'm going to right click on that and create a new um, feature data set. Wait, hold on. Excuse me. Go back to catalog. Right click on it. Create a new feature class, not feature data set. And so, um, you know, you've created most likely geomorphic surfaces, geologic units, and things like that that are perhaps polygons. You will have lines as well, um, like faults. And um, you might be asking yourself the question, should I be creating a feature class that's polygons or lines? The answer is actually lines. We're going to start with lines. We're going to make line work. And then from that line work, GIS will automatically make polygons for us. Uh, so this is the way to go. Otherwise, if you make separate polygons, then you'll have to adjoin uh, like this Mississippi and Great Blue Limestones line to the QAFO. But if you make lines first, you just have to draw that line once instead of each time if you do polygons. So we want to do lines. And we could just call it, um, you know, 
your name, Toke lines or mapping lines, map lines. How about that? Um, if you want, they can store Z values, which would be interesting. It's fine. Uh, and route data, that can be interesting as well. That would be like the order that you click it matters. Uh, neither of the things are required. I'm just going to leave it with Z values for now. OK, so and it's going to put this data set on the current map. OK, so Toke mapping lines are here. Um, I want my lines to just be single point black lines. OK, great. Now um, what we're going to do is basically click some lines, OK, because there's nothing in that file yet. We look at the attribute table. We can confirm that there's not much there. Um, actually, at this point, just to keep myself organized, I might add some things here. No, I won't because these are lines. We want to add things to polygons, OK? So no, we'll just keep it as is object ID, shape, shape, length. Okay, so close the attribute table. Um, and then we'll go to edit. And we're going to create. Click on Toke map lines, and we're going to create lines. And I'm not going to digitize this whole map right now, but uh, I'll do a couple enough lines that we get a few polygons and. Um, and then you'll see where we're going. So maybe the first thing is to set our mapping area bounds. And so to do that, you might just make a border around your digitized map or mapping area. If you didn't map the whole thing. And do you see how it's snapping? That is a good thing. Um, I, you want snapping on, and it is. Because we want these lines to close. If they don't close, it won't automatically create polygons for us. So if snapping's not already on, please turn it on. OK, so now I've got my outside border. Then what you do is you basically trace your geologic mapping. And you know how much detail you do here is going to result in the level of quality and accuracy of your geologic map. Most geologic maps that are produced for like a state agency don't get any finer than one to 24,000, which means we are kind of clicking precision needs to be at that level. So we can, um, you know, so you might like zoom in to, so here we're at like, I'm zoomed into one to 3,000 here. So if I'm clicking maybe slightly imprecisely at this scale, um, it will look pretty good back here at 24,000 scale. Um, and realize I, I'm digitizing a 1 to 100,000 scale map, so it's not going to be that good. It's kind of pixelated, and there may be some inaccuracies as well. But your mapping uh, was done, I think, on imagery more on the scale of one to six or one to eight thousand scale. Um, and that scale is maybe pretty common for how a geomorphic map might be produced by a state agency. Uh, but it usually won't be published at that scale, um, which then is somewhat protective, right? Of inaccuracies somewhat showing up in the map can be just down to scale. Um, so I'm drawing the edge of this young alluvium here as best I can at 1 to 8,000 scale right now. You'll want to zoom in more and click at least like my recommendation would be to click at half of the scale that you mapped at just to avoid inaccuracies, but I'm just trying to save time with my map right now. But you can see I should have done a little better there. So this is going to take a little bit of work, 
But your mapping area is not huge, so you can do it. Okay. Okay, so I snap to this edge, I hope. I'm doing again here. So I'm not going to do too many of these just to give you the idea. Um, so remember again, scale. You want your maps to be accurate to the scale you mapped in the field, so zoom in to say half of that or, or double that. And uh, so you can work out like one to 4,000 in this clicking environment, and then you, you should be pretty good in terms of, um, oh, I didn't close that, so be careful of that. Make sure it snaps, closed, okay. Now you don't, it doesn't have to be one line that closes, it can be another line as you can see right there. Um, yeah, and so you can kind of feel that snapping taking place. So. Yeah, work at one to four to get accurate to one to eight. I'm not doing that here, but you will. So now I've got my alluvium coming through. Now, you know, if I digitize my fault lines, which don't all connect up, they're not necessarily going to produce um, new polygons because of that, whereas my geomorphic maps, mapping lines and um, geologic mapping lines should have discrete boundaries and should produce um, kind of snapping polygons. Oh, it's not quite there, okay. And if you want to know, remember what you already mapped, um, you might choose a different color than black for your mapping lines, something psychedelic or yellow or something, right? Then, well, it won't show up very well on this one, but if I do like this major road, I can see what I've mapped already. Okay, I'll do this little polygon here. Apparently, they found some question mark Mississippi and great blue limestone out in this alluvial plain. Does that mean it's a clipper? What's a clipper? Okay. Um, all right, let's do this fault. I don't know if I need to dash it like they did everywhere. Now, if your fault is here and you have this fan different than that fan, um, the fault kind of sort of defines that, but not fully, right? There's a boundary issue here, so you could also choose to put another line there if you think that you want that to happen. Um, I don't, this is dashed across and it's a different unit. So I guess I'm not going to map that fault at the moment. And well, you can see some different fan patterns here. And draw some pretty crude ones here for a second. Your mapping better be better. OK, and then. So. 
undo that last one. I think if I right click on it, delete vertex should do the job. I get to zoom in. And then I guess I should do this contact with the great blue. Duh, I'm going to dash it through there. You need to think about how this will show up when you create another polygon to decide whether or not you really wanted to do what I just did there. Am I following the fault or am I following the contact? I might not have been consistent. You probably should be. OK, so I haven't done enough of these to get my full map, but I've done quite a few. So you can see them there. Those are all lines. We can go to the attribute table. And it preserves their line length. Um, if you select one, show you what one that is. If you needed to edit it, you could. Um, OK, so let's uh, save my edits. OK, so edits have been saved. Now um, what you're going to do is go to geoprocessing. And. We're going to go to toolboxes. And I believe we're under conversion tools and we're going. Um, Yeah, so under data management tools, feature class, no, features. So do uh, you see it? There's a tool called feature to polygon. So lines are a feature. Say you had many features. You could have, you know, some polygons, some lines. Um, Basically, you could take a bunch of input features and create polygons out of them. In this case, we've done this with the intent to do that. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll input our, our mapping lines and we're going to make polygons out of them. We'll just run it real quick. Completed with warnings. Empty output generated. Oh, goodness gracious. That didn't work. Where did it put this? OK. OK, let's call it something else. Let's call it um, Toke Polygons. Now I have had, oh, I see what's wrong. You see it's not producing anything. I've got one line selected. When you run a process and you have something selected within that file, it only runs on that one thing. So I have to clear my selection. Let's run this again. Now we should get something. There we go. We've got something. That's wonderful. Now, um, they all look the same, right? So then uh, to fix that, we can add a, a field. And um, if you want it to be text, so you can call it whatever you want, you could call it that. So like you could say, uh, you call it geo, geo unit. OK. And click Save. Then we go back. And once you've got that geo unit there, we can then say select something 
in the geo unit. And we can say, which one is that? This is a little piece of polygon here. And we could say this is QAFO. Okay. And then what's this one? That's another QAFO, whatever it is. Glue you. And this one, that. A QAFO. So these should be named consistently and accurately relative to your mapping. So this is a pocket of also quaternary alluvial fan. I'm going to call it, I don't know, just for something different than OB. I haven't done the mapping, so I don't really know. Now this is younger alluvium, so we'll call this QAL. Um, Q A F um, A. It's making stuff up at this point, but oh, they called that Mississippian great blue limestone. And this was Q A F. B. And this was Mississippi and Great Blue Limestone. And so was this. Oh, I named it wrong. I think. You know, you need these names to be exactly the same so that we can then symbolize by name. So typos are not wanted. This is Q A L Young or A L is probably good enough, I guess. But if you wanted to distinguish as younger than the other one, you could do that. And then this is Q A F. Undiff. I didn't map it really. OK. So we've been editing. Um, you know, so save. So now that's all saved. Now let's clear our selection. And let's click on Tokay polygons and go to symbology. And instead of single symbol, can do unique values based upon now geo unit. And now we get something like a geologic map. Now you can adjust that. If you want the great blue limestone to show as blue, that. If you want the um, something else like the youngest fan material to show is like bright yellow. And then um, slightly less bright yellow for the next one. Um, yeah, so you can do all of that. Now, you can choose to keep your lines for symbology purposes, or you can turn them off. But basically, yeah, this is how you can create your geologic map. Um, in a digital format. OK, so let's stop this video here and I'll make one more video about adjusting these lines based upon uh, digital information that you have. OK, so stop the recording.